Hello, everyone, and welcome to Into the Cypher State, the premier public broadcast of Galactica Network. My handle is citizen42.gala within the Cypher State. You can call me Dave. Today, I'm joined by my regular co-host, Cosmos Hoss, and some very special guests. Um, so now, before we start today, I'm just going to do a quick disclaimer. Um, it's very important to remember that both myself and Cosmos Hoss are your guides to navigating the hyper Cypher State, uh, and our guests' opinions are very much their own. Uh, we are not your financial advisors. Nothing that we say on this space constitutes financial or investment advice. Uh, now we have that out of the way, uh, let's go around the table and introduce ourselves. Uh, let's start with Hoss. Uh, how you doing, man? Doing well, yeah. Everything we say is never financial advice. Do not do what we do because we're all nuts and insane. But we do believe in crypto and, and we believe that it's going to change humanity for the better. At least I do. And that's why I devote so much time and effort into this space. And um, But yeah, my, my name's Cosmos Hoss. Been in this space since around COVID time. And um, yeah, I mean, I believe in it fundamentally, like blockchain really all it is uh, is a decentralized accounting ledger. And then, you know, that's my background as an accounting. So it just kind of resonates with me and all the memories and times and, and fun and conversations I've had in my whatever it is now, two year journey. Um, it's it's been revealing that this has changed a lot of people's lives and maybe people don't see it more in developed worlds. But, you know, there's a lot of places on planet Earth that they have no other choice and it actually is empowering them so that's why i'm in this space but nice to meet everyone that's listening man we know you bleed crypto so do we okay man um so we have uh we also have john back we have john from defund man please just introduce yourself quickly dude thanks for having me yep john from defund here defunds a blockchain for creating financial products and those financial products are you know, we're not offering any financial advice here. We're just enabling the creation of these products that you may or may not buy one day and hopefully help you achieve your dreams of financial freedom. Um, yeah, that's pretty much Defund right there. That's another good uh, good egg in the space, man. It's good to have you back. Uh, GC, dude, uh, it's nice to have you back too, my friend. I haven't seen you for a while up on the speaker panel. It's good to have you. Introduce yourself if you can. Hey, thank you. So I'm George, founder of Athena Consulting. Basically, we work, we provide blockchain solutions, implementations to different startups, L1 and L2 blockchains, and also protocols. We've helped over 10 so far. I am a crypto native since like five years ago. Like 99% of my assets are in crypto. And when Hoss said the other part of the world where is third world countries, basically, this is one place I was raised in where all banks basically were dissolved and all the funds all the people's funds basically disappeared in one night, right? So crypto there is very appreciated, and that's why I'm also in crypto. Man, 99% in crypto. I mean, I'm, I don't know, like 70% maybe. That's impressive. Impressive, GC. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, we actually have a new speaker on the stage as well. Uh, we have uh, we have Wolfman. Uh, Wolfman knows. Uh, he's uh, He's been founding projects on Cosmos for a good long time, it looks like. Uh, so please, mate, if you can introduce yourself. Hey, yeah, um, I, uh, I got into Bitcoin in 2013, you know, um, the group I was hanging out with in Austin, Texas, a little place called Brave New Bookstore, uh, owned by Harlan Dietrich, and it was the underground bookstore under a bank, and that's where they introduced me to Bitcoin, and it was just this idea of, you know, a, a hedge against bad actors and bad governments, and it just got me incredibly thrilled to be a part of, and uh, such an incredible innovative hedge, you know, I remember Liberty Corn. Liberty, Liberty coin back in uh, when uh, in Ron Paul's days when that came out and how they shut that down so quickly and it's amazing that Bitcoin's still going on and uh, so I've gone on to found uh, three projects uh, the Owlies it's like a crypto trading game uh, co uh, like a trading card game kind of like Pokemon uh, and it's it's pretty fun to to have been able to create and build that and then we went on to found a ONFT and that's basically uh, part of what Stardust Labs is building out for them which is a software for uh, NFT projects and even other builders where we're we're launching uh, right now with free staking and then we're, we're also bringing uh, some other really amazing tools like Quest and other things that help to bring communities and creators together and empower them without having to spend a small fortune and find devs and all of that. So yeah, thanks for having me. Awesome. Uh, you're more than welcome here, man. It sounds like you're being pretty ambitious with your goals. Fantastic stuff. Okay. Um, so Absolutely awesome. Well, I guess uh, everyone who's listening, I just like to say, uh, get comfortable. Um, 
If at any point you feel like you wish to add your point of view to the conversation, please raise your hand. Uh, don't worry if it takes a moment for us to bring you up. Um, it'll be probably Cosmos Hoss who brings you up and he likes to make sure that it, you're not a bot because <laughs> uh, we've had a couple of those and uh, they're funny uh, for, for the first one. Uh, after that, not so much. Um, so yeah, we'll just be, uh, we'll just please raise your hand if you would like to speak. Um, okay, um, so I'd just like to give uh, the last reminder, if everyone who's listening right now could just uh, jump down to the comments of the space, give it a like, give it a retweet, just get this space out to more people. We like to educate people, so the more people educated, the better in this space for sure. Um, okay, and saying that, let's go. Um, so obviously the title of the space is pretty self and, um, self-explanatory. Uh, Today we're going to be discussing uh, the American government department that just can't seem to leave crypto or frankly anything else for that matter alone, uh, the SEC. Um, so we learned on Tuesday uh, that the commission had uh, leveled direct charges against Binance US, its subsidiaries, and Sheng Peng Zhao, uh, the founder of Binance, uh, so the individual. Uh, there are numerous charges, to be honest, uh, too many to really list uh, right now, but in brief, uh, the SEC alleges that Binance US has been trading securities in the form of several high cap projects, which I'll probably list at some point later, um, as well as providing staking programs designed to evade lawful US supervision. Um, finally, it kind of needs to be noted, I guess, uh, that these suits are civil in nature, not criminal. Um, so yeah, firstly, I would just like to kind of go around the table and get everyone's opinion on this, uh, because obviously it's uh, directly affecting most of us in the space, regardless of whether we're in the US or not. Um, so yeah, if maybe we can start with our newest speaker, Wolfman, if uh, you'd like to give your take on this one, man. You know, it's, I find it really interesting because uh, they didn't go after FTX like this, and um, you know the the pals that they seem to keep, um, and the way money seemed to in flow in and out of that platform um, is really fascinating, and the way it interacted with Binance and CZ. Um, but at the same time, too, I think um, you know there's a lot of issues with Tether, and there's a lot of issues with Binance. And, um, you know, I don't, uh, I think there's a lot of, there's, there's a lot of stuff that we don't know about. And I think, um, there's a lot to still be seen. Um, but as we've seen, even with the ripple case, there's very little that the sec has been able to do to, to really incriminate anyone in this space. And the takes are incredibly terrible. So, um, yeah, I'm really curious to see how this all unfolds, but either way, uh, they just need to get out of, uh, crypto cause they don't, they don't really have jurisdiction here. Yeah, well, um, they're 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 adamant on saying that they do. <laughs> so uh, themselves and the um, CNFT, I, I can't remember the acronym for the other one. They're basically juking it out for for their right to their right to bash crypto, are they not? Uh, Cosmos, uh, uh, Hoss, uh, what's the what's the second uh, second um, like uh, division that uh, wants to wants to regulate crypto? CFTC. Yeah, I was going to say John would know the, the acronym for that. But in my opinion, they would actually have more of a jurisdiction than the SEC would, like the way it's it's set up. I mean, I don't know if John, I think, because John has a lot of background in, in like, 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 right, Wall Street, right? Aren't you? Well, I, I had a lot of connections in Wall Street. I was more on the advisory side, but I did want to, I did actually trade for a bit on the commodities and Forex side. Uh, CFTC oversees all commodities and specifically helps with the Chicago Board, Options and Equity, CBOE Exchange. Um, CFTC pretty much oversees the, it's, it's the SEC of commodities trading. So futures, forwards, options, derivatives, and uh, commodities. Um, it does make more sense so it really makes sense to open up a completely different entity to oversee crypto, but the entity currently built to handle crypto the best is the CFTC, in my opinion, because crypto does trade more. If you see it as currency, it should be man managed by the CFTC. If you see it as a commodity, it should be managed by the CFTC. If you see it as a security, it should be managed by the SEC. But I don't see it as security. I see it more as a store value, not an investment contract. So it should be seen either in the CFTC or under its own new branch, maybe a, a federal token commission or something along those lines. But just to yeah. play devil's advocate yeah. here, I mean, an awful lot of people would probably argue that some cryptocurrencies are indeed securities by their nature. So, I mean, yeah. there, are, there are some bad actors in the crypto space and there's some just... Well, I wouldn't call them a bad too. actor. You know, I wouldn't necessarily call it a bad actor. If something is security, then it's a security, you know, on, uh, regardless of the technology. If it is a security, then it should be managed by the SEC. I agree 100%. 
It's just a matter of how are they declaring these securities under what basis? And then if they are securities, how do they stay compliant? Right. I know, and I'm just going to dive right into this. It's probably going to mess up your guys' combos, but whatever. Um, I know that a lot of what is going on with these lawsuits against Binance and Coinbase actually has to do with the reporting requirements. Is this something I've been quite vocal on over the last year or so? Because it's it's naive to think that there will be no regulation and asking for no regulation is probably the worst thing to happen to crypto. If we want it to be widely adopted and widely respected and trusted, like Gensler is claiming, it does need to be regulated to a degree. But that regulation, I think, comes down to reporting requirements and a level of trust and safety on the end user. So for every publicly traded stock, you need to have your 10Ks, 10Qs, your annual statements, your quarterly statements, and your constant updates from the boards of directors and just the overall officers running the corporation. Right now, there's no structure for that in crypto. It's all completely optional. If you submit anything, you're pretty much signing your death wish to be declared security by the SEC. But those reporting requirements, I think, should be enforced. I think, honestly, if you're running a decentralized exchange or a centralized exchange, you should have at least an automated method to report on a regular basis the underlying assets, where those assets are going, and making sure that there's no real loopholes for fraud. Um, And Coinbase, well, Coinbase is doing it to a degree. Um, Since they are a publicly traded company, they are reporting some certain things, but I don't know if they're reporting the whole deal. I don't have access to their underlying uh, documents. I know you could look up 10Ks and 10Qs and see their overall assets for the the company, but that doesn't necessarily mean it has all of the exchange traded assets. Binance is doing none of those. They're not a publicly traded company, so they don't need to. Um, I do think that the reporting requirements are one of the biggest issues that really should be a topic of regulation. And I do think it's something that crypto companies should be more than willing to do it. So what you hire one extra employee to handle reporting. It's so much better for the end user because you're adding that level of trust. So I do think that reporting requirements are probably the biggest thing that hopefully comes out of these lawsuits. And if it forces Coinbase and Binance to report accurately of where those assets are held and where customer funds are actually being held, I think it's actually a positive, but that doesn't seem like what the goal of this is. I think it seems more like just a shot at crypto as a whole. So, yeah, that's just my two cents on that. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's a it's a strange uh, it's a strange business, the whole thing, um, and it's also a very odd time in, uh, in like the global kind of economic structure of things, because um, obviously the uh, the dollar is uh, is under threat right now uh, from BRICS and all sorts of other like macroeconomic factors, um, and obviously crypto is uh, in essence uh, at its base level, it is a viable alternative to fiat currencies in some, at least some of them are. Um, so it's, uh, there's, there's all sorts of uh, narratives and there's all sorts of uh, perspectives on this. Uh, I'll just say that, um, I'll just, just read out um, Gary Gensler. So Gary Gensler, for anyone who doesn't know, is the chairman of the SEC. Uh, his, uh, his view on, uh, on Binance is the following. Um, so their whole business model is built on a non-compliance with US securities laws, and we're asking them to come into compliance. Um, so that's uh, it's uh, and again this is a, a civil not a criminal case um, so I'm not sure exactly how um, uh, the, maybe uh, d- maybe John or Hoss maybe you can enlighten me on the uh, on the exact difference between civil and the criminal cases in the US just to make sure that there's no no um, no one's going to jail there. no one's going to jail is what it means it just means that uh, they're going to pay bonds if they do lose the case they'll pay a fine and there may be a change in uh, underlying company structure as a result. Yeah, a lot of what they do is just like, in my opinion, it's just money grabs, you know, because like th- that's kind of how a lot of civil lawsuits are just in general. It has not, you know, just just in general, not even with like what's going on right now. They just do it because the other person either doesn't want to pay for the lawyer structure or they just say, whatever, we want to be this, just get this out of our face. And here's, here's your little payout. And then that little that person goes to the next entity, you know, and <clears throat> I don't know. It, it's, it's really, it's just, it's kind of sad to be honest with you because I don't even think that they have any guidelines on, on anything. You know, it, that's just all, all in general, even with like taxation and just, there's no like fine print. And I think John made, um, made a good point about there needs to just be like a new, you know, things, 
evolve over time. Like humans evolve over time. Technology evolves over time. Like the SEC, how it was constructed, like it's been around forever. It's not adapt to like what it is, right? Like this is a lot different than what, you know, a a, a company, a stock, a publicly owned stock company was going to do in like 1950. Like people back in, even people alive right now, most people alive right now have no clue what even crypto even is. Like they just don't even know what it is. Like they have no idea. Like they, maybe they heard of Bitcoin, but they don't know how it works or what it does or why it does what it does and, and anything like that. And that's majority of people on planet earth right now. So like you think that something that's been established for all those years are really on point. Like some of them might be, you know, they might hell some of them, pro- most of them probably, I don't say most, but some of them probably even own maybe Ethereum. I think that's probably why they don't go after Ethereum. In my opinion, I could be wrong, but um, because like what <clears throat> Ethereum clearly did was a security. Like they had initial coin offering. People could buy it. Like That's the definition of a security. So I, I get it. Like there was no rules back in, but there's like no rules now. Even Coinbase, like them going after Coinbase, that's just a money grab because the like, Coinbase disclosed everything. They even put that in their initial filings that they were going to do staking and offer that as a service. And then all of a sudden, I think it's more so because that's like a gateway for Americans. You know, people get in in and out and that's like a main central point, uh, focal point for them. So they're like, let's just jam that up, you know, and then it'll kind of halt stuff and slow stuff down and probably just laying out the the pathways to get their little digital currencies in, 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 in circulation or whatever they're trying to do. And I'm not the biggest, uh, I know some people, I think George has the sentiment that CBDCs could be used in an okay way, in an okay manner. But, you know, in my opinion and from my experience with people in charge and that humans, like the reason I kind of like crypto, because for the most part, it doesn't erase humans, but it it helps mitigate a lot of like human flaws and, and greed. And is it perfect? No, but it's a, it's at least some sort of a solution. And in like what even Galactic is doing besides just like monetary things, like I think crypto can essentially better almost every niche right now, whether that's through mo- monetary systems, governance systems, just anything, just like giving rights to people, you know. And I think it it, it really affects me negatively when when people out there or attacking our freedom in, in any sense. Like I'm just like a freedom maxi and anyone, regardless of politics and anything, but like if you're running and you're trying to re- evoke any sort of thing and make up some sort of socially constructed crap to kind of like take away my freedoms, like I'm not cool with you. And I think, you know, over the last like decade or so, more so than ever, it's been just like slowly, but surely like they'll just make up stuff. Oh, well, if if you if you believe in privacy, you must be hiding something. Like no, it's because I just want to chill and I don't want some random person on the other end to be able to know everything that I'm doing. Like, isn't that my right as a as a human being? Like, why do you get the right? Like, who's watching you? Like, who's the gatekeeper to you? Even like all the censorship uh, stuff that was going out. Like, you couldn't say a word about COVID beforehand, or else like you get shadow banned, or you know, e- even just asking questions. Like, hey, like you know, just actual questions about everything is like, like that's this, what this whole little thing is going towards. In my opinion, it's kind of sad. I don't think it's going to win, but um, yeah, I'm just going off on the deep end right there, but that's kind of my thoughts about everything. Well, one thing that's interesting is you brought up the, the Coinbase staking, right? And it's actually, so it's interesting. Uh, I'd actually, I'd actually full disclosure spoken with uh, Gemini and Coinbase about their staking services because there is something that they're doing wrong there. And specifically, um, Gemini Earn went through this and Coinbase staking is going through this as well. Um, what they're doing is essentially turning the staking mechanism into an investment contract, right? Because what in, in the case of Coinbase here, um, they would offer quote, staking onto these other chains for a stable 6% return. That's not how it actually works on the staking interface, right? When you go into staking into a chain, you're not looking, you may have your own, you know, predisposition value of, yeah, I'm going to make a return, I'm going to make APR over this, but you're not going for a set 6% return. You're going to provide security to the network because that's the whole purpose of staking. You're giving your tokens to a validator to provide security for the blockchain so that a civil attack or something similar does not happen to compromise the network. What Coinbase essentially did was, okay, stake with us. You're going to make 
a constant 6%, not knowing that you're actually making more if you're going staking on your own and you're, quote, still securing the network. What they're doing is they're taking their their own fee on top outside of the already earned staking rewards that they're getting from their validator and providing a different in turn investment contract into their staking services. So their staking services are not actually the staking services that we're all accustomed to in a DeFi system. And I think that is actually an issue. And I do think that they do need to change that. Um, they can use decentralized managers. That's why I kind of spoke with them. I have something I'm selling them. Um, but pretty much there is better ways to actually give people true staking into those chains that actually provide security versus just a stable 6% return investment contract. So they did inf- effectively turn the securitization aspect of proof of stake blockchains into an investment contract. So that's just, that's just kind of what I wanted to bring up on that end. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I've always been very um, suspicious of most of these uh, centralized exchanges, um, like staking services. I think most, I think most, I can't, can't, you can't say all, but most uh, centralized exchanges are guilty to some extent of this. Um, so yeah, they, it definitely needs to be cleaned up. Um, what um, I don't think we've actually heard from GC yet. Uh, G- Sorry, mate, I haven't really given you the opportunity to speak. Do you want to have a take on this one just before? I'm just going to move on to um, like um, uh, the differences between some of the uh, the coins that have been mentioned in the listing. So bef- but before, if you want to speak, please. Yeah, um, so I think my opinion is pretty aligned with what everybody said. They're just, it's, it's just a very easy money grab for them. And they also just want to control as much as they can, because they think they do not have enough control on basically all the cryptocurrencies and all basically, um, how can I call it, all the securities, which they call them, which is just on Binance and on Coinbase. Whether they whether they are securities or not, it doesn't matter since basically there's there's a lot of bigger fish they need to work on or bigger problems they need to work on, but they're just going for the low-hanging fruit, which is basically an easy grab, cash grab for them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's pretty pretty obvious, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, these guys really need to come and act on that front. Uh, it seems we have a new uh, speaker on the stage. Uh, Sean, nice to meet you, man. Uh, good to have you up. Hey. Um, hey. Uh, what's up, guys? Uh, I've been a long-time Cosmos uh, community member. I, this is probably, like, the third account because I, I keep getting, uh, <laughs> like, banned or whatever or suspended, so I have to make new ones. But uh, basically... I you think I, like in your freedom. I, I, I've been discussing this issue like a lot. Uh, I am an attorney also, but I'm not giving legal advice here. I'm just giving you my kind of thoughts on this. Um, I did multi-level marketing and pyramid scheme SEC compliance for like billion dollar companies to turn like every multi-level marketing and a pyramid scheme. They're the same thing. But anyway, we got the Ninth Circuit to like draw a line basically because that's what we need here is we need a line for where a security is and where obviously bitcoin is not a security right uh ethereum we're like on the edge we don't know so we need to what we need to do is draw a line and uh, the line they drew for multi-level marketing versus a pyramid scheme was um whether the more than half of the uh, profit of the company came from sales to end users or it was like based on more than 50% of the profit on recruiting. That's how you distinguish it. And I think that like we need to, as an industry, come up with like our own way of defining the difference between these things that are really bad, like Pepe coin being offered as fucking security. Clearly that's a bad fucking idea. But also like I don't buy stars on stargaze and nfts with any purpose of like expecting financial return like and we're starting to interoperably like work with every other chain where this is no longer like you can't even list just the tokens you're calling securities because we're all like a different thing now does that make sense i think we need to look at this like differently than like oh, this is an ICO in 2017. This is like cryptocurrency as a whole, one cohesive like ecosystem. Like it's not, it's not an offering for the expectation of profit by the work of others. I mean, it's just silly to call it that. I don't know. 
what do you guys think like about like the idea of trying to like draw a line for the in, like for them like i don't know any lines that you can think of it's logical to think that there's a line that needs to be drawn right and it's and i think it has to do with the underlying token and the underlying project's revenue right what what are you launching and how is it continuing to continue its operations right is it purely public goods funded you know it only exists because people want it to exist okay i wouldn't call that something that's a security right um if you're running a project that the sole source of revenue is people buying and selling that token maybe maybe it it kind of teeters the line now if you're running something that drives revenue from other sources other verticals then maybe that's where the line draws. So if you could say, just kind of like you were saying, maybe more than 50% of the revenue makes you a pyramid scheme, we could say maybe if more than 50% of the revenue from the blockchain comes from directly owning the token. Or or even like a, a um, if 50% or say, say Cosmos is a great example. Cosmos Hub is a great example. 67% of the token is directly used for no other purpose than securing the chain there's um like that's the goal of the protocol like how can it be a security if less than 40 percent of it is available to the public for sale and then how much of that gets used for how many other purposes what what is left for speculation i mean and what you know it's like that's a use and there's like there is federal case law on the ninth circuit like about this multi-level marketing like and pyramid scheme stuff with that the law is really clear like as long as like it is you know to the the main focus of the thing is like to get to the end user to be used as a thing that basically here i think would define the line you know that that's when it becomes something that's not just for a financial investment you know it's not with the expectation of profit you're expecting to use it for something like, I think that that's something that we're all really not focusing on. You're not rewarding me for staking with U.S. dollars. You're giving me more Adam. And I don't see how that's like, I guess if it's Coinbase doing it and stealing a cut out of it, that's a security. But if it's just me staking myself and I get more Adam to use in the ecosystem, I don't even understand where the SEC thinks they can deal with this or be involved. You know, and what you said brings up a a big topic of the commodity aspect, right? If there's an actual use for this, then you would, because nobody's out there spending stock, right? You're not taking your shares of Apple and buying things with it. You're selling that Apple to go buy things. You could theoretically, for a lot of these tokens, spend them. You can go to different grocery stores and spend directly with those tokens. You can spend them on other things. You can buy NFTs, which is art. That's a non-fungible token, but it's a piece of art that you can hold as an asset. But it can, calling an NFT a security would be on par with calling a painting a security. They, and it just doesn't make any logical yeah, they, sense. Yeah, they actually leave NFTs off the table. I, I don't think anyone is calling an NFT a security. I don't think. Yeah, but it, <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah, continue, continue. Uh, no, I was going to say, like, with, with what we're talking about right now, but even, like, the rules about a commodity, right? Like, Bitcoin is the only commodity where, like, if you let the futures contract expire, like, they don't send you Bitcoin. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so how's that even technically even a commodity? Because, like, if I if I bought, like, if I was doing corn or, or oil and I don't send it to my house, like, they'll send the corn or oil to my house, like. But if I buy Bitcoin, like, and it expires, like, I don't get Bitcoin. So I, like, Wait. I don't even, like, I don't, I don't know what they're. So doing. Bitcoin, every, every, I think even Gensler agrees, like, is clearly stated as like not a security. So like, I think focusing on like why he would say that or how that it, it's used, right? You buy Bitcoin to use it. The only thing that it does is get used. Like there is, there is an expectation of profit. There is all those other things that's wrong with everything else, but it's also got one primary use and that's the only fucking thing you can do with it. So like all the tokens are theoretically like used for that purpose. Like if, and Ethereum's like same kind of deal. I think that the use of the token versus the spec, like the non utility, non use of the idea 
is a pretty common sense line to like draw on this. I don't know. No, I, I agree with that. But then like, I think about most cryptos, like then that kind of fits in the same shoe. Like you're just talking about Adam, right? Like no, like, yes, we all, we believe that Adam's going to be worth more in the future, but like we buy it because we're either staking it to secure the network and get, like you said, we're not getting actual dollars. We're just getting more Adam. So like, there's no expectations. Like the price can go down to, it can go to zero technically. Like no one technically knows. The fourth prong of the test though is to buy the work of others. Like it's to protect you from like the board making decisions for the stock and not following like a fiduciary interest. If I'm staking my own fucking Adam, that's my own work. That's my own investment. That's my own decision. That's my own control. It, it's not a security if it's not like based on uh, profit solely by the work of others, you know, like a regular stock you buy, you don't get to control what the company does on a day to day basis or shuts down what companies or lays off what people like I can control my own stake, <laughs> unstake it, manage my own risk. That's not a security for me. This is one of the reasons why I think it's interesting the timing that they're doing this, um, because I think that obviously this goes very deep into the the governance of protocols and how um, and how um, decentralized that governance actually is, um, and whether the you know the SEC maybe can take advantage of the weakness in uh, in current in the current governance in the in the cryptocurrency industry um, to actually you know, get a little bit of leverage on their claims. Um, but honestly, I don't think they have a leg like, to stand on. But it's just uh, just another interesting point. I think every project should have right on their fucking homepage. We are not a security because, like, head on address the issue. Yeah, I agree with that. And then, like, what you're saying about drawing a line in the sand, like, I don't know, may- maybe everyone signs some sort of disclosure getting into crypto. Like, we don't want your protection. <laughs> like, we don't want you, SEC. Like, we're we're we're, we're well aware that this investment may go to zero and we don't care. Like, just leave us alone. Don't tell us what we can and can't do with our money like that we earned. You know what I mean? Like we work our job and like, we want to buy this. We want to buy Adam. We want to buy Osmo. We want to buy whatever. Like we want to buy ETH and Bitcoin. Like, don't tell us you're, you're protecting us because we're already signing this piece of paper saying we don't care. Like we're buying it. So I don't know. It's just, it's, it's just not crazy. a security. I mean, it doesn't even make any fucking sense to talk about it like that. Like a security is like, so they have to issue quarterly reports and like the Dow has no fucking fiduciary duty to me by like law that they must be following and complying with. Like those are the reasons for these regulations and for classifications. Like it makes, I, I just really don't even understand this. And I cannot believe today was like the first day I was like, wow they're they're fucking serious like because it's laughable in court that they're gonna do this i i think it's it's probably gonna get laughed out look at rip i think sean sean i have an interesting question for you you brought up the the aspect of governance um and you brought up how you don't really have a share um when you own a a share of a stock you you, kind of do right so when you when you own shares of of a stock most people never do this and unless it's a very specific you know class of shares you you don't have voting rights, you give those up, but you technically do have voting rights. It's just 99% of retail investors who only own one or two shares, they're never going to vote, right? But people that do own a lot of shares, they do have a vote and they do have a say on the direction of the company. So it brings up the question for crypto governance. Does that constitute the same level of ownership that owning a stock would? Because theoretically, you have the same yeah. voting privileges but, uh... in a crypto governance token. but you don't have the same motivation uh like the people that have the majority of the shares that are on a board have a fiduciary duty to act in the best interests of the people that like of the stockholders of the price of the yes like that doesn't exist here i have a i have no duty to anybody but myself that's true and that like, that's true totally but that's just the board members own, though uh, a company you know i yeah I, I i guess i see a pretty big distinction between the reasons that you would call a security you has to report these things and do these things and tell the truth and blah 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 versus yeah i mean they can vote one share it's pointless um but they don't have a fiduciary duty owning three shares i guess it's true but say you owned 
a million shares, right? You would still want your vote to count because you have such a sizable amount that you want to make sure that stock is going in the direction you want it to go, right? You know, when you're running a, a business, the, the you're running a business, you're so, you, you know, they always say, and a lot of them like to stray away to be a little edgy, but your sole responsibility is shareholder return when you're running a, a standard business that issues stock. So when you're running a similar mechanism, a governance mechanism that is similar in a way to the way stocks currently operate, it does bring up that question of, well, those voting shares are there. Does that then make it a, a security? Because Bitcoin doesn't have that governance. No, I don't right? think voting so, is part of the definition of a security. Like, I think that that's just like a common quality between the a stock and this form of governance. But I don't think there's any like any part of that that I guess necessary. Like the primary purpose of atom or token like it doesn't care what the price is the protocol wants the chain secured it wants 66.66 percent of all tokens staked it adjusts inflation or it adjusts the apy accordingly like it's a- yeah but you could always do stock splits and reverse stock splits to to change that same value you can always edit the amount of shares that are out you know those are all things that are regularly done in the current markets so i'm just trying to you know the governance aspect is not that different than a standard stock experience. It's just you're not having regularly scheduled quarterly calls and quarterly reports and annual reports oh, to, to do. It is so much that we have access to every single thing that ever happened on chain. Like, well, yes, and that's because of the, the, the ledger. And I think that it's a much better method of reporting. But regular reports are not consolidated and issued right you have to do your own research versus in the stock market you have regularly issued reports that everybody which is needs. it's all public why they need to be sec compliant because they are issuing yes. reports that people are relying upon to make investment decisions that doesn't exist here you know it's like and then i was gonna, yeah i was gonna bring up too because like i i see both both points and I think the only thing it kind of gets gray, like in Cosmos or just in crypto, especially proof of stake, is anytime that there's like a really big discrepancy with like the validator sets and how much they actually stake on chain. And then if the people are being lazy, especially like right now, if you think probably, I don't know the statistics, but I'm just going to shoot from the hip. Like most people aren't really as engaged right now, like voting on governance proposals. So like right now, in theory, like some of these validators and we would all be remiss to think that this doesn't happen because we're at the end of the day, we're all humans. Not, not all of us have good intentions, but maybe some of them are kind of colluding with one another to get something passed that maybe doesn't benefit to some small fish that just has like 10 atom or something, or, you know, and I'm just playing that, that side of of the fence or whatever, that crypto governance is, in my opinion, is still a lot better than actual real life governance. If that is a thing, but it does need to improve. I don't think crypto really is a security in a sense. Like there, there, there could be ways that it is, you know, like I think anything like pre-sell that I kind of think it is where someone can get in early and then they raise the prices as like the dates go by. Like, okay, well, if you're early and you have a bigger deck, like you can get this coin at eight cents and then two months from now, it's going to be 15 cents for these people. Like, I think that's kind of a security in my opinion. Like I think that is, and that shouldn't really be a thing in crypto, but it, still kind of happens and i do do think the problem too gets kind of gray is that and I, I mean a lot of these tokens have been doing it or, or protocols is they like geo block america because they don't want to deal with it but um you know some countries they don't care about any of that stuff they're like whatever like you can do pre-sales and you could do this like it's completely fine so that kind of is a little difficult too because crypto doesn't sleep there really isn't truly no borders like you can be anywhere and you can buy atom anywhere on the planet it's like the first time in humanity where like i view crypto as more of a freedom choice like you can decide what the hell you want to buy like okay you know what i'm tired of cosmos like i'm gonna sell all my cosmos i'm not this is not financial advice because i'm never doing it i freaking love cosmos but one day someone could be like i'm sick of cosmos like i'm selling everything in it and i'm just gonna go over to the Ethereum planet, or I'm going to go over to the Solana planet. And then like, okay, I, I don't like this anymore and go somewhere else. Like, that's one of the things I like about crypto is like, you're free to choose. And it's it's almost like 
living in America, right? Like you would be free to choose any world currency and it would just automatically do the math. You wouldn't have to know like, Oh my God, like this currency sucks, but it's worth $1. I need, I need 7 million of these to, to buy this. And so like, I don't know. Like, I think John, you hit the no on the head at the very beginning of the conversation. Like there just needs to be uh, a group, you know, whether that's uh, some people that are heavily involved in crypto already be a part of the panel or whatever, but there needs to be like this collective mindset where it's newer ideas and people, maybe not even just Americans. Like it needs to be like some sort of like worldwide, like a, a alliance or something that kind of puts the, like a, uh, like a freaking, um, I don't know, like a playbook for people to kind of follow. Like, hey, like this is going to be kind of unacceptable if you do this, but this is completely fine. The thing is, you know, like, the, crypt- the, the crypto problem is that is such a thing, to- and that is the um, the, the well, at least something that's trying to be, and that is the uh, the, the World Economic Forum and the FATF. Um, so we're trying to avoid getting people like that in charge. I think. I think the crypto community could easily sue the SEC. Like, they're so not proactive about this. Like, they just wait until the SEC decides to sue them. Like, why don't they, like, outwardly sue the SEC? Like, they, they have standing against the United States like, government to, like, bring recourse to court. You know, make their own arguments. They don't, you don't have to wait until you're in this shit situation before you address the issue. Everyone saw this issue coming for years. Yeah, so that'd be kind of a good idea. Like all these big chains that are, say, in the top, I don't know, 50 or 25 or whatever, they should just all collaborate with one another and have a fund. You know, like, hey, we're going to, like how we have community funds, like we're just going to put like a half a percent of our total circulation supply in this fund and what it's going to be is is for legal and then you just basically like you're saying you just counter sue i'm like all right well we're just going to sue you first because you are just enforcing by you're not even giving us guidelines you're just enforcing whatever you want it's like you wake up in 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 the beginning of the day and you just decide like hey you know what i think this is a security and then it's like it's like you know we live in this world where we're supposed to be innocent until proven guilty like so prove us guilty before you can actually do this and not just like claim stuff you know like how the the fact that some of these tokens i know we didn't really get it specifically into the list but i mean i i kind of looked at all of them and some i have more experience than others with but like i don't understand how any of them are technically a security you know what i mean like if anything like i love it i like ethereum but like anything that kind of has an ICO or like you can get in a price at a certain point and then it can kind of change over time because they're, they're like having it in like tiers or whatever. Like that to me is kind of a, you know, a security. But other than that, like I, like if you're using it and you're free to do whatever you want with it. And like you said, there's no like really for the most part, I mean, there are foundations, but there really isn't like a board of directors. Like the board of directors are like a hundred and something different validator sets that technically only get to vote with their stake. If every, every participant actually voted on whatever governance proposal there is. So like, there's really no difference, you know? And I, I don't know, like, I just, it's just, it's just wild what they're doing and it's kind of embarrassing. And I think in the future we'll look back and just uh, hopefully at that point that the whole little, thing that's going on it won't even be a part of like the future like we're probably going to have some sort of new collective idea group or something because yeah these people don't know what they're doing yeah clearly (laughs) um so um this has absolutely been a fantastic uh fantastic conversation i just want to just interrupt it very briefly um we're at the top of the hour so i just want to make sure that everyone who is listening if you could please just do us the favor uh, jump down into the comment section below. Give us a like. Give us a retweet. You are listening to Into the Cyber State. This is the premier public broadcast of Galactica Network. Uh, we are a uh, an L1. This is currently being developed. You just want to jump on our Discord. We can actually uh, check the uh, the top tweet and uh, jump on our profile. See what we're we're up to in there. Uh, but the main thing is, if you can share and retweet the space, uh, we're providing a lot of education between our wonderful speakers here um, for just for your benefit. Um, so yeah, it would really help us. Um, as far as um, the um, uh, this kind of like the governance stuff goes, uh, it seems like um, I would say most of the um, most of the, uh, the, the the list of coins and uh, projects that has been mentioned by the SEC, um, they're all like most um, crypto projects. The the problem is their governance is almost always financially based. 
Um, so, you know, if you have the most tokens, you have the most power, um, and which is one of the one of the issues with decentralization that doesn't really crop up very much. Um, but it is an avenue for saying, like, yeah, you know, your this may not look decentralized in one way, but it is decentralized. It is um, it is uh, centralized in this way. Um, which could be a, a, a something for the SEC to lodge their claws into, as it were. Um, this is why um, the Galactic Network we are, in fact, trying to push for social governance rather than just simply financial um, and meritocratic social governance at that. Um, so it's uh, we need to move away from this uh, the token-based kind of governance in order to um, be able to have any real, um, true claim at decentralized governance. Sorry, Sean, you have an opinion, please. Uh, I just wanted to, what my opinion is, is that they're going to figure out that basically Binance and Coinbase, they're, they're offering securities. They're, they're securitizing this asset because Binance is the number one validator on, Co- on Cosmos Hub. And they're taking an enormous cut and giving the customer on Coinbase less. So that is offering somebody a return on investment by their work. Binance does the same thing. But the tokens themselves and the governance themselves, like in the decentralized way, I don't think is arguably a security. Like they're not suing Adam because they can't. It doesn't make any sense. Like they can't sue AVAX. Like it doesn't make any sense. You can't do that. But the companies that are there offering these things and then taking a cut out of it, that 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 does like toe the line. So, Sean, I, I like where you're where you're going with that. And actually, when I was on my deep end conversation before, I, I totally forgot to to mention this. But so, like, what do you? What's your thoughts on like a validator? Like, say the minimum is like five percent. So, like, you know, it's real competitive, and everyone tries to either be at the minimum. If there's none, some people do zero percent uh, fees. But what happens if someone's like contributing to the network? Like, um, you know, there's a lot of validators that, that they're, they're not just validators. That's just like something in their portfolio that they do, but they might be like doing code and all this other stuff that we need. Maybe they charge a fee to kind of help compensate that part of their, their business model or the fact that like, if you're at the minimum, like right now, pretty much I would think in crypto, just in general, probably running a validator is just not profitable at all. Like it's, you're actually probably putting, take, taking a loss right now. So what happens if someone's like, you know what, we're going to charge 10% instead of 5%. Is that technically a security? No, I think it's, I think it's the fact that like the, the, there's a person offering it, you know, the, there's, there's a place offering you a return on your investment and then they're doing all the work. So they're, you're, they're taking custody of the token. They're staking the token. They're taking a cut off of that money and they're doing it all. Like they're offering you this product and in return for your investment, they're doing work. You get a cut of that investment back that, that, is kind of towing the line of as close to a security as you can get. Um, that's why I think they're going after Coinbase and Binance. They can't go after Ethereum. It's too decentralized. They can't go after, like, well, who the hell are you going to sue in Ethereum? Like, you can't. You can't sue these actual projects. You can't stop the projects. You can't call the project securities. But the people no, I mean, this is all about getting hold cut. of the founders and finding yeah. some centralized entity, correct? I mean, like, it was about the SEC trying in, in some vein to, to pin Ethereum's um, success uh, onto, the, onto the shoulders of Vitalik, for instance, right? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, I do think that it's pretty damn close that Coinbase is offering securities right now, and they're not registered. And I don't think that it's that hard for them to really understand that. Like they're in the business, they're a publicly traded company on the New York Stock Exchange. They know what a fucking security is. And I don't know. I think it's in disingenuous to say they're not offering that thing and taking a cut out of it. But it's getting muddy it's muddying the line between like the actual protocols themselves are not securities. That's what I don't I think there needs to be a distinction drawn between like what the act the actor that's offering this return on investment by their own work. If I was saying like, Hey man, get some, uh, Adam from me and, uh, I'll stake it for you. I'll hold on to it for you. I'll do all the work. And then I'll give you a cut of the money afterward security. If I buy my own Adam 
I stake my own atom. I don't give a fuck about anybody else and act in my own self-interest. I don't know how that's a security. Well, they wouldn't necessarily be acting as security. They'd be asking, acting as an investment advisor, right? They're managing your funds. They are essentially, you're trusting them with your funds to create return. And if it's a specific product that's tra- that's traded, maybe that's a different sort of story, right? But if you're giving your funds to a centralized entity and they're taking your funds and multiplying them with the expectation of return other than just holding them for safekeeping, that would constitute them as an investment advisor. I think it's just yeah. that, that that through the work of others thing, it's got to like, it, it implies like the SEC is there to like, to protect investors, right? Like to protect small people from big people doing horribly fraudulent things. And like the small people not knowing or having any way to change it. And like, I just don't, I don't think that the tokens or the protocols themselves in any way are like securities. I think that's silly. But I do see why they're why it's so confusing, because you have like the companies that are out there offering these tokens, offering these services, and like they're almost like turning it into a security in a weird way, where it's not like necessarily fundamentally a security to begin with, you know. Honestly, I would have to kind of agree, yeah. And um, like the um, the kind of like the criteria that they use, like you like you say, to be de- to be de- derived from the efforts of others. Um, it's, for instance, like Ada um, Cardano, right? Um, you could um, argue that while it was, um, I would say, fairly distributed at the start when it was actually um, when it was launched, um, you could say that. Um, because um, Charles Hoskinson, for instance, um, has a uh, has a disproportionate effect and a disproportionate um, like um, I don't know, like a um, he, he, you could you could you could argue that he um, he adds a lot to the price, as it were, and from his efforts, uh, and he uh, um, uh, he adds to he tries to add to the price of the of the of the token. Um, that's completely false take, just so you're aware. Um, but it's uh, it's it's, a, it's an argument that anyone who is looking in from outside could make. Um, now, uh, I think that um, as long as a layer one protocol, especially, uh, which is kind of the distinction that we're coming to here, I think, like obviously the centralized exchanges can easily um, end up on the hit list of the SEC uh, just through these, um, what I think what we've been discussing a relatively... Uh, shady kind of like staking programs uh, but an l1 protocol as long as it's um it's built um it's built and distributed fairly um it's sufficiently decentralized um and um any um any expectation of profit comes just from um uh, just from the user themselves I, I i really don't see any any the sec getting any traction on this you know i actually think dexes are going to be okay I think they're going to be okay as long as they can, like we said before, with the reporting requirements, right? Um, because all the data is there. You know, you can easily check all the data on the chain. You can check where the assets are going. You can check where they're sent to, where they're received from. You can check all the transaction fees. All the data is right there. I just think that if they can consolidate that data into reporting statements regularly, whether that's automated through code or through uh, a person hired to do that, and then prove a level of safety that you're not going to be scammed using that DEX, I think DEXs are going to be perfectly fine. Centralized exchanges are going to have a much bigger issue because they have bank accounts and they have to deal with actual investor funds and institutional investors that they're holding a lot of cash there and actual assets and the reporting income on these. So it, it does change when you go to a centralized entity, but I do think DEXs are actually going to be okay after all of this. Now, the underlying tokens, that's a different story. Um, I think it all depends on the actual nature of the token. One, one thing that hasn't really been touched on with this whole, uh, all these tokens that the SEC is considering securities are mirror protocol assets. Um, if, if anybody's being honest with, with themselves, those are, those are securities, right? I mean, mirrored Apple, mirror Twitter, you're just copying a stock and putting it on chain. That's security, man, especially since they're not 
backed by the underlying security. I've been uh, preaching about this for a long time. Those are probably the biggest red flag, and I'm surprised it took this long for the SEC to even really make a point out of them. But you're profiting off of a stock without that stock actually receiving any benefit from, that's a big issue. So, what about, John, what about like stable coins that are pegged to like global baskets of assets or what or whatnot? Like say it's a decentralized uh, stable coin that like say 15% is backed by Bitcoin and it like follows the pegs of like 10 different currencies or something. Like what would that be considered? You know, that to me is a collateralized currency and that's a, that's a commodity or a currency in a way because you're not buying a stable coin with the expectation of profit, right? You're buying it as a medium of exchange to spend. That is the sole purpose of a stable coin. You're not buying a stable coin because you're going to gain 15% on it. You're buying it so you can spend it. And I think that any stable coin that is truly serving the purpose of acting as a medium of exchange is not secured and it shouldn't be you know treated as such yeah there's just so it's just so great like i i get yeah i I believe in all that it's just like stuff is just so great like i i get like i know sean said he's a lawyer i honestly think a lot of the stuff that like the sec is doing in my opinion like for america for america is almost unconstitutional right like because you think about it it's a it's a virtual digital right and not only that, like certain like states are all different. So there's 50 states and each state has its own set of like parameters. And it's just like you're federally like getting people involved. Like what happens if you live in a state like, say, Texas? Texas is like, no, nah, we're not following that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Like, I just I, I it's just so gray. Like, I think that there, like some things are doing is unconstitutional, in my opinion. <laughs> there's there's really interesting arguments that are novel that people are making in the legal community to get out of this whole SEC world where they talk about the 10th Amendment saying that uh, all rights not listed here are reserved to the states and those not reserved to the states are to reserved to the people. And it's like, well, like this doesn't seem to fall into like any. It, like there's nothing in here written about us not being able to have our own governance structures and our own like you know system of monetary policy and our own ecosystems and our own whatever like maybe we're like independent sovereign things that aren't subject to the rules and laws of the United States like it's pretty interesting and theoretical but uh, it yeah well, I mean, this is actually comes back to pretty much what you said when you first came up, Sean, and that, you know, if it's going to be regulated in any way by, um, by like a third party, by a country or something, it needs to be its own entity, like it, the SEC and the, and the, um, and the, uh, the other entity, that I still can't remember, um, is, uh, is they're not really suitable in, in, in general. I mean, they, they're, they're, they're close, but no cigar kind of thing. And uh, if they're not going to be regulated on chain and we are sovereign, then we don't report to anyone. I mean, if we're sufficiently decentralized, then who who do we report to? You know, um, I understand that. You know, if uh, if a country if a, a country can always make a request, but you know, if uh, if decentralized governance decides that it's uh, it's uh, it doesn't need to report to it, I mean, what's the what's a centralized government going to actually do? Yeah, I I just think it's uh, it's bizarre that America. I I, I think it's bizarre. I, I can't believe I agree with the people in politics right now that I agree with. Like, Florida just signed into law like uh, that they will not accept any central dig- bank digital currency issued by any like government, including the United States, for any commerce. Like, and I like I couldn't disagree with Florida more on like basically every other issue imaginable. And, like, I don't know how it's possible that, like, we're in such a fucked up situation that, like, that that guy's getting it right right now, you know? I like, I think, um, not not really talking politics, but, like, if you, like, look, stepping out and just looking at it from just, like, a, a broad, broad perspective, like, I think in America, you know, it's going to be kind of like how liberal states, the li- liberal tending states kind of, we're more open to like marijuana being legal and things like that. I think it's going to be like reverse with crypto. I think it's going to be more, uh, more um, Republican led states that are going to be like open their arms to crypto. And then slowly, but surely it's going to be just a, a thing, whether that state tends to be a Republican or Republican or Democrat. Now it's going to take time, but that's kind of how I view the states. 
because like every state's kind of different and things like that. And, and like the way, as I got older, like, not that I don't care about different things, but like my whole premise of everything is just like freedom. Cause like, once you don't have that, then none of that other stuff matters. Like regardless of it's like, Oh, you know, I, I really believe in this cause or that cause. And like, at the end of the day, like if you don't fight for your freedom, whether it's whatever, like then you lose all those other things that you might care about. So like my whole thing is, um, you know, taking a shoe off. It's like, I care more about freedom than anything else. So what, whenever someone's kind of revoking that or, or kind of messing that up, then like, they're not on, um, they're, they're just not my, my friend. They're not what I agree with because like, that's what this whole country was built on from day one is like freedom. So like, you, you got to like kind of keep that in mind, like regardless of what I'll, of this, you know, what, what shoe you're on or whatever. It's like, I just care more about freedom than anything else because it's, it's a kind of proven, like if you look at like the history of humanity, like there's just the, like a lot of times someone, even like my thing is like most senators, I think the, the average is like $2 million or so for them to even become a Senator that they have to take from other people. So like, even if you're kind of like a pure person, like over time, you have to bend, you have to do favors for, for those that don't have the best interest of the person that's just like working a nine to five. And like at the end of the month, they're just excited to be able to order some pizza and food and, and kick it with their family. Like those are the people that keep getting screwed over, you know, and, uh, and like when the government just keeps deciding to print more money because of whatever sort of arbitrary reasons that they make up or whatever the situation is, that person that's working nine to five, like they don't have as much time or money to like order that pizza or like actually not have to work till they're 90 years old or whatever, you know? So like my thing is, cause like I'm, that's my, my backgrounds in accounting and all that. And that's kind of why I got into crypto in the first place. Not because I just love tech. Cause I do, I've always loved tech, but like this is ways to kind of mitigate these people that are calling all the shots and deciding like, Hey, you know what, we're just going to do this, this and that. And, and, um, you know, at the end of the day, like inflation pretty much for the most part is just all man made. And like, I always view time, money as time. So like whenever someone's taking my time from me that I work my ass off and they're diluting it, like it really pisses me off. And like, I don't care if you're on the left or right or the middle, like I'm only down with people that are, are tired of that shit. And like, you know, imagine being able to just do whatever you want, right? They're like, you know what? You don't have to pay your bills or there's no consequences. And these people that are calling the shots right now, they like no consequences consequences so it really starts to piss me off and it's like i i want those people out of the I, I want them out of there you know like there needs to be like this whole reckoning of like how even like that comes into play like you shouldn't be a lifer in congress like you should have a term like you should have an age limit you know like these people that get in there they just like sit there and even, even some of the politicians like you look at like the presidents right like like Obama, whenever he was done with office, like his wealth is like up like th at least three X, four X before he got in there. And like, how is that? How's that possible? You know, like not, I'm not about people not making money, but like there's just a lot of crap that's been going on and people just accept it because they get distracted so easily by other things, you know, like, oh, well, this this cause or that cause. And not that those aren't important, but that at the end of the day, the most important thing should be your freedom and like your time that you get on planet Earth shouldn't get diluted because some jerk off wants to decide to print more money or do this or that. So that's my whole thing. I'm going to leave it at that, but I don't like to get into politics, but that's kind of my thing. Cause I think crypto as a whole is kind of like a libertarian movement, whether you're like on the right or the left, it's more about freedom. So like, that's why I think like, even Bitcoin maxis, like that's why they're all about freedom. Like that, they just, no matter what, they don't even want to buy other shit. They're just like, I want Bitcoin because it's freedom, you know. I th and, like the the Bitcoin uh, maxis, they do uh, tend to they do tend towards that way, um, and that's a it's a re it's a very admirable way. Um, but the pro the thing is, like, it's Bitcoin is a um, a wonderful protocol, and it's one of these things that um, it was uh, the first mover. It's uh, it's got all this uh, it's got all this uh, hype behind it, and it's uh, it's very good at the one thing that it does. Um, which is a superb financial rails, um, as well as um, having uh, like a, this, uh, this digital gold kind of aspect. Um, but it's uh, it doesn't act as a governance layer. And if you, what you want to do is get rid of the, uh, I, I don't particularly agree, but we don't need to get rid of the people. I think the people aren't really the problem as far as governance goes. Uh, awesome. I think um, I think it's the system that's uh, that's been built up, and it's been built up over hundreds, even thousands of years in some cases. Um, the systems, uh, the social systems, 
um, and people uh, accept them because they live comfortably under them. You know, you as long as you've got a, 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 a man or a woman who is fed well and happy, who can live their life without like uh, undue stress uh, or undue like massively undue duress, um, they're not going to complain at the system and they're not going to try and take down the system. Um, but right now you've got like, a, for instance, in, in the US, you have, uh, we, we all really in Western society have governance systems um, that if we could just take them away and have direct governance from citizens, um, it would be a much fairer, much more equitable kind of uh, system where everyone has like um, an actual direct vote on everything that actually affects them. Um, and that's uh, that's one of the, uh, the founding pr principles of Galactic Network itself. Um, we are trying to make sure that everyone uh, who uses uh, our network has a uh, has a has a viable vote, has a viable way of saying, you know, this thing affects me. I want to actually make a change. And if um, you happen to have like as far like if we can bring it all the way to meritocracy, then even the people who um, the people who have the most experience in a certain subject can have a slightly um, more increased voting power than the um, than people who are not uh, as experienced, you know, so we can actually get something approaching um, a merit-based system in which citizens themselves have direct power. Um, and then you don't need the governance layer that we have right now. And uh, I think it's a very idealistic situation, um, but it's, uh, it's not something that could ever happen in, a, in any kind of near term, but it's a, it's a, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a goal to strive for anyway. Uh, sorry, yeah, GC, the, you have your hand on that. Yeah, sorry. let me, I was going to add one thing before GC is uh, even like with Bitcoin, how we're, we're praising it and rightfully so at some point though, it would have to either like utilize say like Cosmos in the future or become proof of proof of stake because like at the end of the day, energy prices, again, I think it's more man-made. Uh, they just keep rising, you know, and what, what would be the premise of people keeping the network up because like at some point there's going to be no more active Bitcoin to mine. So it's like, you know, at that point it has to, it has, it would have to transition into either like, look, we're going to use, you know, this currency is going to be able to, we're going to use Adam because it's the most secure, most interoperable, most, you know, whatever. And this is kind of one of the things I could see like Cosmos being used, utilized for in the future is because of the internet of blockchains and be able to use like, bitcoin is this digital currency throughout all of crypto and it's like acceptable and because like at the end of the day like there's only going to be you know well 21 million and we know a lot of people lost their bitcoin so say 16 or 17 the best case like 18 million bitcoin it'll all be out at some point so people will have no reason to mine it anymore like what would be the point point? and at that point who knows how much electricity would be for people to even mind. It's not going to be profitable. So as much as I love Bitcoin and like Bitcoin's amazing, like at some point that would have to transition into more of a, there has to be some sort of situation like, all right, well, you know what? We're going to, we're going to park our Bitcoin on this blockchain or that blockchain. I don't know. That's just my thought, but go ahead, GC. You, you wanted to add to that or whatever, but yeah. So um, first of all, I completely agree with you. Ross. So Bitcoin is only one part of the whole crypto ecosystem. I've been seeing some Bitcoin maxis also trying to say that Bitcoin is not even a crypto, which doesn't even make sense, right? You could call it the father of cryptos or the grandfather, but it's definitely not a crypto. It's definitely cryptos, right? So anybody saying it's not a crypto or they're trying, like, basically Litecoin, if if they follow that logic, then Litecoin is also, they should be a Litecoin maxi because Litecoin is just a fork of Bitcoin, right? So what's the difference here? Anyways, what I wanted to say basically was also we have, we have we have a very narrow view and we're probably taking what the SEC says maybe too seriously. And the reason is if you go back when Satoshi even created the blockchain and Bitcoin, the reason was to get away from all the bullshit that the SEC did and how it always bailed out the banks and the big guys and always let the retail investors lose on the long run. Right. So it, it just got they just got mad and they decided to just. Um, created a decentralized system where everybody could, you know, do whatever they want without even needing to hear about regulation or about what the SCS has to say, or what about the banks have to do, right? So in the long run, we use blockchain to avoid even hearing what the SDC has to say. Fine, it's security, who cares, right? 
it's security. I'm still going to use it. It's still my wallet. You can't access it no matter what. It's in my, it's in my ledger or not ledger, <laughs> a cold wallet at least. You can't access it. So I think this is how we should see it on the long run, and we should see it as breaking th out from the hands of the government while they're trying their best to control us, basically. It's a beautiful take on freedom, GC. I think you guys uh, align pretty well. Um, so I think we are pretty going to um, uh, slowly wrap this up, guys, but I'd love to hear Sean's take. Uh, she, he's got his hand up, so please, mate. Oh, I was just going to say that I, I don't think you run into that problem because, um, like, the reason that I, I think Bitcoin, a major reason that it's so, it, the price is so high compared to what it was, it, it, it follows pretty pretty well with how much it costs to make. Um, there's a certain physical aspect of proof of work. And like, just like mining gold, if gold is $2,000, people will mine gold all the way until it's not profitable. And then that leads to like the natural supply and demand change, which, you know, lowers the price until somebody goes, well, now it's so cheap to mine gold, like I'm going to mine a bunch of it. And like when it like, you know, it's like that part of it is putting like the real world into this. I don't think that it, I don't think Bitcoin will ever be unprofitable. Like it doesn't matter. It's it, you get six coins a block right now and <laughs> the whole world mines it. So like if you're just making transaction fees by the time we're at that point, I mean, I think you're going to be doing fine. Yeah. I think Bitcoin is probably here to stay guys. Um, and uh, yeah. I, I couldn't couldn't really uh, disagree with any of it. Oh yeah, um, it's, I was gonna say it's definitely here to stay. I just think maybe it has to evolve over time too. And I think it would be smart for blockchains like like Cosmos, right? Because it's so interoperable. There's who knows how many blockchains over sixty or so. Don't quote me right now, but like I I envision that just keeps growing over time. And you know, there's no reason why we can't just get like Bitcoin to be kind of like a currency. You could just have a blockchain that's just like we're gonna we're going to like, cause there's wrap Bitcoin already and like Ethereum. And then people, you know, bridge that over to the other ecosystems. I just think Bitcoin should be like, basically just the, it's pegged to everything's pegged to Bitcoin. It's, we got to get out of this mindset that everything's pegged to the dollar or like it's pegged to this, like just it's pegged to Bitcoin, you know, like we're going to use that as like the, the price point. I know right now it's, it's a little bit harder to do that. Cause like prices are very volatile, but like I could see in 10, 15, 20 years from now, we'll just use 20. Like it'll probably be more stable. Like all the space will be stable. Cause one thing I've learned about technology, it always goes forward. It never goes backwards. And it's just going to keep going forward as long as we don't get hit by like a media. Right. Cause you can't shut the internet down. I mean, it's just going to be impossible. So this, these technologies are just going to keep evolving. You know, you can look back, um, you know, freaking Amazon was just a bookstore back in like 93. And now, now look what it is, you know, I'm not saying these cryptos are going to be any what to that extent, but like, who knows, you know, the future's unlimited. So we'll see. Well, I know you brought up, I mean, we yeah. can, we, we can always end up with a Bitcoin standard. I mean, the second that, you know, Bitcoin becomes liquid enough, it, it, it's a possibility. Sorry, defund. I think I over, over you. No, Wolf went first. You got it. I was just going to say, you know, I think that goes back to, like you were saying earlier, uh, just the timing of all this, I think, is really poignant to to look at as well with uh, all these filings and all of this, uh, these kind of statements coming out like this with uh, just the money printer going crazy burr, global markets, everything else. You know, I mean, 2024 looks kind of bleak as far as like global currencies and global markets go in a lot of ways. And I think, you know, the much as much FUD as they can do to keep the average people away from hedging their bet into uh, cryptocurrencies and into Bitcoin, I think is, is, is very much a part of this goal. I think when FTX was their money printer uh, for their their sly deals on the back end, they were totally OK with this. But I think at this point now, they're absolutely you know going to going to continue this kind of battle to keep as much fear in, in the hearts of most people to keep them from coming into this space and keep keep this place, uh, make it look as unstable as possible. You know, and I think the, but the closer we get to the end goal, like what Haas is saying, where Bitcoin, we start pegging ourselves to Bitcoin and stop pegging it to dollars because they know that that moment's coming. And when that currency starts going and it goes, you know, the US dollar starts going where it, it most likely has to go. I mean, the only alternative is to look at Bitcoin as the standard and not, and stop looking at fiat as the standard. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm just going to do a very quick reminder to everyone uh, who's listening. You know, every single fiat currency that has ever existed has failed at some point. That's that's just how fiat currencies go. They hyperinflate at the end in 90% of cases. You know, By design, uh, too. By design. I mean, uh, I was I probably going to say his name wrong, but Raul Dell, he does like a, I don't know, a couple hour long lecture on currencies. And he shows you like over 500 year periods. I mean, these are like, these are powers that work on much longer scale frames than, than time frames than we could ever imagine. That's just unstoppable. And they've already lined up what the next global currency is going to be. And they want the U.S. dollar out because it's so apparent, as you've seen, America destroyed our economy, destroyed our manufacturing. The pride and joy of America was manufacturing. And all of that was robbed and stolen from us and shipped overseas. The moment corporations became people um, and have actually more rights than we do in the early 1900s, right? When if you watch the, the, the documentary of the corporation, you really see that was the beginning of America becoming robbed on top of the Federal Reserve being established, right? And so the moment those things came into play, you saw the America is literally the land of milk and honey with endless resources that needs to depend on no one that has the best waterways to ship goods completely throughout the entire country, the easiest, most best distribution in the world. It is an unstoppable force, right? But we're seeing the complete destruction and fall of this country. And it is nothing more than orchestrated. And especially like we were talking about before, when it comes to governance and you talk about, you know, people being able to vote. Well, that also becomes dangerous because you have to remember for over 100 years now with the American education system, they've, you know, if you read John Gatto's Weapons of Mass Instruction, you'll see that they have had a long campaign of dumbing down public by putting fluoride in our waters, actually lowering our IQs, right, to make a dumber, immoral public, as our founder said, you know, you have to have a moral public to, for, for this kind of governance to work, to have a republic, a rule of law, not a majority rules, not mob rule, right? And we really, if we implement some of these things now, it can actually be kind of dangerous because society has had their IQs lowered and their education completely destroyed. And so there's just, it's a, it's a whole cesspool of just massive destruction. And just to say it on this side, man, I, I'm just thankful that I have a Lord and Savior and uh, I've got something else besides all of this to to rely on for my salvation. So, I'm glad to hear it, Wolf. I'm glad to hear it, mate. It's always uh, it's always good to hear that uh, people uh, have, uh, have, a, have a who have a strong faith. Um, obviously, that's uh, not the only way to go, but it's always nice to hear. Um, okay, guys. Um, so I think um, what we're going to do right now is we're just going to wind down the space. Um, I think we've had a wonderful freaking topic. Uh, I think it's. Um, more, more importantly, we've had far better takes uh, from our from our speakers today. So I really thank you guys for that. Um, so it's been a great space, and we've had some amazing insights. Um, I'd just like to kind of offer you guys up on the panel uh, an opportunity to share any last remarks before we wrap up. Um, perhaps we can uh, start with maybe GC, and then we'll end up with Hoss at the end. Hey, sorry, um, you lagged. So can you just be pushing, sorry. That's okay, GC. I was just asking if you had any final takes. If not, there's no worries, mate. Oh, yeah. So, um, all was good. I think there was very good space. So, thank you, guys. Yeah, man. I appreciate it. It's been great having you up again, mate. It's always welcome back up. Um, Wolfman, perhaps you have a final take you'd like to just take? Or was that um, your final one? Just... <laughs> you know, I don't know. I think this was a great space. I actually, um, there was a lot of really great takes in this. And, um, I think everyone, if you, you miss some of the earlier stuff, go back and listen, listen to the talk about what securities are. I think there was a lot of really good takes on here. Some things that will help you navigate the waters as you continue to invest and be a part of this space, you know, especially somebody who's in the NFT side of this and, um, you know, trying to create and build things. I think it's it's a really fascinating and, and they're constant. Any, anytime you're in a Anytime you're in a, in a market that is controversial, there's never a lot of rules. Like I'm in the cannabis industry, too. And so for the last decade, you know, there's just like you're operating in gray waters because there's no definitive rules or, or regulations on this. Right. But it's the risk takers. It's the people who take those extra steps, those leaps that will be rewarded the most. And as we can see, too, very few people actually wind up <laughs> in jail in all of this. So, you know, we're in the right space. We're doing the right thing. We've seen the success. We we believe that there is something more than what these governments are are offering us. And so having spaces like this is exactly the kind of thing that we need to continue to do. And I really appreciate you guys for inviting me here. Thank you, Haas. Thank you for Galactic for, for being here and continuing to do what you guys do. 
because this is exactly, you know, the more educated we are, that's our battle. That's our fight. That's how we get there. I don't know if we need to give certain people more voting power. I think we just need to continue educating people and really showing them what a good moral code is and what a good structure is for, for governance. And the more people understand that and what it looks like to participate and to value these core values, right? I mean, so much of this country, if you were voting before, there was a conviction, right? So many people just go because the whatever the, the media says now. But, you know, when there becomes a strong conviction in people's hearts, you know, they're going to vote because they're educated, they understand it, and they're convicted in these things. And that's exactly what we need. And spaces like this is what's going to get us there. So thanks again. I appreciate the flowers, Wolf. I really do. And uh, yeah, it's it, it's all about education. And that's exactly what this space is about, is education. Um, and so uh, on that note, I would just like to just suggest before we go to our last couple of the speakers and their final takes, if you could just please jump down to the comments, give us a retweet and a like. I know the space is kind of uh, winding down right now, but it still helps to record and get out to more people and educate more people. Um, I'd also just like to state very quickly, um, if you want, you can jump up to the uh, the pinned comment, uh, the uh, the Jumbotron, some people call it. Um, we've actually got a new space starting. Uh, that will be on a Friday, the same time. Uh, this one will be more about um, like uh, Galactica, for Galactica Network uh, members. Uh, well, not members, but like a Galactica net network community. Um, so, if you'd like to find out exactly what's uh, what we're what we're up to and how you can be uh, one of our pretty much uh, pioneers, one of our most uh, early supporters, please just jump onto our Discord and check out the tweet above, and uh, and we can direct you in the right direction. Then you can see uh, what we're up to. Um, so, yeah, uh, please uh, defund. I believe next. Uh, do you have any final takes, mate? It's been great having you. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. It's been another great space. Always love hopping on the space with you and Hoss. Never fails every time. You always have some great conversation. Um, I think it's going to be interesting to see how everyone adjusts from these SEC, you know, cases, right, if anything happens um, in the short term. I think it's going to be long term. There, there will be regulation. The existing uh, businesses and people that are building in crypto will adjust. It's just a matter of what that's going to be and how it's going to happen. Um, but I'm here for it. I'm excited because with positive regulation comes positive growth to a general population. So here's just hoping towards positive regulation that benefits everyone involved. Yeah, totally. And, and like, I'll just end it too. Like Wolf kind of ended it on a strong note. So I don't want to like steal that thunder. But for, for those out there listening, like education is the key of, of life in general, not not just in this space, but just in life. Like if you're if you're not educated or want to improve yourself at, at in with the, with these technologies and these tools that we have, then I don't really know what to tell you. But I do encourage people because we all get these dumbass text messages saying, vote for this person, vote for that person. You know, maybe reach out to your local, um, you know, people that are running for offices and see how what their stance is on on uh, crypto. Because, again, like I don't try to think, look at things left and right and all this other stuff. I'm all about freedom and, and I want people to be encouraged to want freedom and not get distracted. And, oh, if you vote this way, it's because you don't like this or that. Like, no, I'm voting this way because I believe in freedom. And crypto is, in my opinion, in our lifetimes and maybe in humanity's lifetime, the most empowering tool that can be ever placed in our hands for, for freedom and power and actually maintaining wealth and controlling our destinies. So, like, I am in it and I'm going to be in it the rest of my life. And I think good always wins at the end of the day. And I think the movement that crypto is, is more than just, oh, let's just, you know, w make some money. It's more about like the tolling and, and the new modern day monetary systems to get people to, to, to evolve and to, to, to prosper. And I think crypto has been trying to speed run thousands of years of inequality and give people more choices. And so just encourage people to like, you know, look into it and only vote for people that are, are about it. You know, if they're not about it, then they're not getting my vote. You're not getting my phone call. You're not getting my support. Anyone that you affiliate with, anyone that's giving you money, you're not, I'm not buying stuff from them. I'm not supporting them. It's all, I'm only about people that are trying to give p power back to the people. And I think crypto is, is basically our last, uh, vessel to, for that so that's what i encourage people but this conversation has been amazing and i thank everyone that's been involved with it uh, this is exactly why i love having you as co-host us it's uh, absolutely beautiful some of the takes you make and uh, your passion clear passion for the space 
Okay, guys. Well, this has absolutely been a wonderful space. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I'd just like to, again, just remind you, check the pin tweet and check out what Galactica Network's doing. Please, by all means, click on the profiles of our speakers today because they've all had fantastic takes. Uh, give them a follow and check out what they're up to. It's uh, it's uh, all, it's so important to just network in this space and give people their props and flowers. Um, okay, and um, I would just like to say um, thank you very much to our audience and listeners. Um, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Into the Cypher State. And we will see you next time, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us. Bye.